Good day everyone, this is Ms. Reza Macy Ligan and for today's session, we're going to discuss about the research instruments. So this is important because in data collection, you are going to use these instruments. And these instruments will serve as your tool in collecting your data. So what are research instruments? So, research instruments are the tools that are being used to collect the data. So, you have to take note that the type of instruments that are being used by the researcher depends on the data collection method selected. So, for example, if you are going to use the primary data research or the primary data collection, then you need to develop research instrument. You need to create a research instrument. But if you're going to use the secondary data, maybe you will use the records as your research instrument. So later, we're going to find out what are the different types of the research instruments. So for non-experimental research, the following are the instruments used in the data collection. So we have here the questionnaire, the checklist, and the records so here um, we just only focus on the non-experimental research because when we do experimental research there are lots of materials that are you are going to use in your experiment but here in non-experimental research you're just only um, you just only apply this following basic instruments so in questionnaires so this is a series of questions designed to elicit information which is filled in by all participants. Or it pwede naman nga kayo researcher ang mag field in ng information from your participants. But the information should came from your participants. So that is under the questionnaire. And I know that most of you are already familiar with this. So, in the left side, that is the sample of the questionnaire in asking socioeconomic profile of the respondents. So, we have here the name, the age, the sex, the year level, monthly allowance, family net income, and so forth. So, that is a questionnaire. And another is checklist. So, this is a list of items that comprise several questions. Actually, it is also related with the questionnaire but the way on how the respondent or the observation or the observer or the researcher will use is through checking so for example here no there there in the left side the structure here is you are going to check the box of the choices so in checklist from the word itself check it's more on checklist checking no, the the choice for each questions no question indicated so for respondents no this can be applied in a survey where each respondent will check no appropriate boxes or appropriate options um, for each question that are applicable to them they are going to check the option for each question and their answers no uh, that is their answers so another is for the researcher using an observation so if the researcher will do the observation method in data collection of course he will be needing or he or she will need this checklist so in terms of observing the area or observing the phenomena this researcher will going to use the checklist as this as her or his guide no, about the phenomena or the behavior that this researcher is being observed has been observed or ang kasi yung checklist is magiging guide niya on how the ma magiging guide niya so for the researcher no using an observation method checklist is very appropriate 
instrument instead of using the questionnaire so i think checklist is very appropriate instrument so for example if the researcher will going to observe the fin certain phenomena or a certain behavior of people just like for example the willingness to pay of people for the echo bug or the participation of people in illegal city in terms of using the echo bug so maybe the researcher will observe a certain grocery store and will observe the transaction between the consumer and the seller so he will observe if this um customer buys an echo bag or brings his or her own echo bag or he's not willing to use the echo bag so that is um the example of the observation then if that customer uses the echo bag or brings his own echo bag then you're going to check this option that this customer brings his own echo bag and that's more on the checklist right so for example here in the left side this uh, there is a general instruction so this is um this instrument you know, shall be answered by the respondent so the respondent were going to check the box of his choice appropriate no um about for each question below so that is how the checklist work and lastly we have the records so a record refers to all the numbers and statistics that institutions organizations and people keep it as a record of their activities so example of this are database census financial statements and performance record so in records um this is applicable for the secondary data method so you're going to get the records from internal or external sources so these are the basic types of research instruments under non-experimental research so these are the guidelines on how you will develop your research instrument so first your instrument must be suitable for its function so it should be aligned with the main purpose of your research so what will make your instrument as a purposeful one if no this instrument is suitable for its purpose for its function so if your instrument is not aligned with the purpose of your study or with the potential outcome of your study then you're just wasting your time making that instrument or using that instrument for your data collection so it should be suitable for its function then your instrument must be based on your research framework so that is why it is really important for you guys to do the theoretical framework conceptual framework and empirical framework because this is where your instrument will be based on your research framework or design and another thing is that the content of the instrument must be appropriate to test the hypothesis or to answer the questions that being studied so again your instrument should be aligned with your statement of the problem and to your hypothesis if it is applicable and the instrument should be valid and reliable so that is why you are going to undergo it with the reliability test from your pilot study especially if you are the one researcher if the questionnaire is made for the first time so you are the one originally structured that questionnaire so you are going to test the reliability of that questionnaire through 
a pilot study and after that pilot study you are going to assess the responses through reliability test and this reliability is and the common reliability test to analyze it or to analyze the validity and reliability of your instrument is the Cronbach Alpha Test. So you're going to research about the Cronbach Alpha Test. So that is very important because the Cronbach Alpha Test ha has it. So the Cronbach Alpha Test has its criteria about the acceptable um, rate. So for example, the, this this question so the reliability result of this question or of this item is let us say above acceptable or above 70 percent so let us say 80 percent so that is acceptable so meaning you don't need to change that instrument but if you get a score which is below 50 percent or 50 percent reliable so that is unacceptable or very poor or questionable so you need to revise that item you really need to revise that item then again you have to do again the pilot study until it this item will become acceptable or maybe you have to delete that item so that is how you test the validity and reliability of your instrument but if your instrument came from the other researchers or you adopted the questionnaire a standard questionnaire which is already built by other author then you don't need to do the pilot study anymore yeah. because it might be that this instrument have, have already tested you know, its reliability and its validity so it's really better to find in a research instrument that is already created by other researcher but again the disadvantage of that sometimes that questionnaire may not be applicable to your research paper so that is why um, if you want your research uh, paper or if you want to answer this kind of questions that cannot be answered using the questionnaire from other researchers then you are going to to create or to structure an instrument okay then gather a group of items from such sources especially these sources should be reliable and a good instrument is free of built-in clues. So when we say free of built-in clues, a good instrument is free of built-in clues. So the instrument should not contain measures that function as hints for desired responses. The response given by each respondent in the research study should solely be his own. There should be no contamination through the outside influences such as someone else's ideas or products. Therefore, the respondent who agrees to participate in a study is responsible for supplying information or for exhibiting behavior that is truly his own. So this is how you develop your instrument. These are the important things in developing your instrument and i hope that applying these guidelines you may be able to create a good research instrument so this is all about the research instrument and i hope you learned something from this and again thank you and have a nice day